So, My Hero Academia Manga Chapter 387 is out. And in this review, we're going to be talking about the insane stuff that happened in this chapter. To major reveals, to potentially the end of the Todoroki family plotline. And you'll see what that is. But first, right after this. <laughs> Hey guys, how's it going? It is your boy, Manga Man Drew, and I'm here to do my manga review for My Hero Academia Manga Chapter 387 called Coagulated or Congealed. And this is a very, very good chapter in my opinion, and you'll be able to see why that is the case. But as I said prior, there are a fair amount of reveals to go over in this chapter, as well as getting to see potentially the end of the Todoroki family plotline as it begins to wrap up in this chapter between Endeavor, between Dobby, Toya, and potentially eventually between Dobby and the rest of the family. So let's just dive right into it and really give my thoughts on this chapter. And for starters, this chapter actually starts off with some interesting reveals not necessarily associated with the Todoroki family, but actually associated with the Himura family. And that is the official reveal that Geddon is actually a Himura himself. And if you don't know the importance of the Himura family, well, we get a little explanation of it in this chapter. But also, that is the family that Rei Todoroki belonged to before she was sold off to Endeavor. And yes, this chapter actually confirms that she was actually sold off to Endeavor and not just through an arranged marriage. Because Gen in this chapter reveals that the Himura family had a lot of wealth even after many of their farmland may have been taken away by the Japanese government. But what actually sealed their fate and really dwindled their wealth and numbers is the advent of quirks and how they wanted to keep the bloodline pure, which is commented by the fact that Gen says that their blood runs thick. And he is talking to Compress in this chapter, which is amazing because this is most likely one of the moments that Horikoshi was hinting at when it comes to Compress's return. Because Compress in this moment talks about the obsession that the family had and contempt for heteromorphs. And he even makes mention to how Spinner would feel about this. And the conversation concludes with the idea that because their run ran thick and that the bloodline was being sold off by the main branch family, that Gen, as well as the other branch families knew what was coming and decided to leave, which led him to become partnered with Redestro. And how he brings up this idea that because quirks are mixing together and growing in strength and complexity, that maybe in the future, someone would have a power that they were not aware of. And what would happen in a world where people set aside their hearts and pursued that power, what type of future it would bring. And this information heavily ties to what we're going to learn a little bit later about what's going on in the confrontation between Toya and Endeavor. But what I really liked about this is that we're getting a little bit more development from Geddon, which is something that I wasn't expecting, as well as getting to see where his ideals about power really stemmed from and why he may have pursued a relationship with Udesto in the first place. And this is something that I'm so grateful that we're getting for this character that seemed very lacking when he was first introduced. Also, the confirmation that he is related to Rey is very nice due to the fact that aesthetically speaking, they look very similar, not just with the ice powers, but also with their fair complexion and white hair. Something that within the series, people who have white hair and manipulate ice are related to one another. Because you got Shoto, Rey, Toya, Geddon, and most likely Fuyumi all with white hair and potentially an ability that is related to ice. Spoilers for what's to come next. But yes, now we transition to the second half of this chapter, which is pretty much a balls to the wall fight and interaction between Toya and Endeavor. Endeavor learns that Toya's body is about to explode, even though they are even though that they are only approximately 800 meters away from Gunga Mountain Villa Ruin which means that the blast explosion that Endeavor learns about will still most likely not encompass just the people who are underground within the evacuation facilities that may be nearby, 
but still affect the heroes and the Toga clones that are around Gunga Mountain Villa. And as a hero, Endeavor cannot allow that, but how can he prevent Toya from exploding, but also save the heroes that are within the vicinity, as well as the civilians who are also there as well? Especially when it's revealed that Toya is losing his mind. He is regressing back to a child as he constantly asks his father to look at him with massive fire punches and massive fire pillars coming out of the ground so hot that even Endeavor is feeling burned. And this is where we actually get the reveal of why potentially Toya is still alive as Endeavor begins to somewhat claw into Toya's chest or fill his chest. But how we also may get another explanation for how powers actually get exhaled and grow that may not necessarily be Quirk Awakenings. Where we have the general idea that when someone is actually approaching a state of death, that's when their quirk begins to awaken. But how other times quirks may manifest or awaken due to hysterical strength or more or less emotional strength. And how apparently this is not necessarily the same as awakenings, but that the power that blooms during this moment of death could potentially be even more powerful maybe? And this ties into the reveal that actually Toya does have raised quirk, as you can see a piece of ice forming around his chest. To which people may have theorized, and I am very much in agreement with, that this is the reasoning why Toya has been able to live this entire time. That while he's able to use the fire and he does not necessarily have resistance to fire, he does have resistance to ice. And that is because he actually has an ice quirk that is dwelling inside of him that he was unaware of, tying back to the beginning of this chapter. And how potentially this ice within his body was been cooling and preserving his body from the inside so that he wouldn't really sustain that much internal damage and how most of the damage would only occur on the top of his skin which makes sense because that is where the fire resistance for endeavor's quirk as well as the quirk factor itself resides and endeavor was unable to really use it to its fullest because of risk of burning and heating up and damaging his internal organs. Toya doesn't have to worry about that because his organs are always going to be cooled off by the ice, which is basically what Endeavor always wanted. And the fact that this is something that was always inside of Toya really just hammers in how poorly and screwed Endeavor is, not only in this battle, but just how much he has just hurt his family for no reason whatsoever. And now Endeavor is most likely coming to that realization and really pretty much accepting his fate as he begins to believe that now he has to die with his son to make sure that everyone survives and that he would have to atone for what he has done. As we get a very beautiful panel that appears to have Endeavor and Toya dancing together. Endeavor believes that he needs to seal his own fate and capture his son and send him up as high as possible to get as far away from the people so that Toya aka Dobby can explode and only kill himself and Endeavor. But unfortunately Endeavor is about to pass out but luckily enough, Ray comes to the rescue and uses her ice quirk to attempt to cool him down with a double page spread as the chapter ends. And if you may be wondering why Ray is here, well, that's for a few reasons. One, Horikoshi himself said it that when it came to the Todoroki family, they are all going to be involved in saving Toya. And he took that very literally. But second of all, it's because the facility that they were in was most likely very close to the area that they are at now. Because based off the official translations, the shelter where Rei, Natsu, and Fumiumi were, were not at Gunga Mountain, but was close to it. And most likely, Endeavor flew close to where they were, and Rei most likely saw the situation and jumped in and tried to fight and help not only her son, but her most likely ex-husband or still current husband that she has very mixed feelings for. So yeah, it's very cool to see that we're going to have actual more Todorokis involved in this battle besides Shoto and Endeavor. And we see that Rei is most likely going to have a scar on the same side of her face as Endeavor and Shoto really tying this family connection together and really tying in the Todoroki family subplot together as well. 
But overall, I really did enjoy this chapter, and like I said, this subplot is about to come to an end, and I think that it may actually come to an end in a very satisfying way. I do believe that most likely what Rey is doing is cooling off Endeavor to make sure that she can send. I think what Rey is doing is building up to a moment where Endeavor is going to potentially try to sacrifice himself to save Toya, but it's going to fail due to the help of Rey cooling off both of their bodies and Shoto who's eventually going to come in and more or less freeze the explosion which would not kill Toya or Endeavor in that moment while also saving everyone in the surrounding area. But I still believe that Toya is going to die but when it does it's going to be at the moment where the family comes together and really just talk about why and everything that has happened and eventually he may not necessarily be redeemed or forgiven but he would die with like a heavy heart no longer a part of him knowing that he was loved by Endeavor and looked at finally for the first time. But overall, I really just enjoyed this chapter with the characterization and development for Gent at the beginning of this chapter, the return of Mr. Compress himself, the cool action that we got between Dobby as well as Endeavor in this fight, as well as the return of Rey and really turning in and combining all of the Todoroki subplots into one to potentially end within the next few chapters. But yeah, this was a very great chapter and I would like to know, what did you think of the chapter? Did you like it? Did you dislike it? And just for confirmation, they are still on the ground, so Ray isn't flying. So if that's a complaint that you had, uh, still leave your thoughts down below. I would still like to read them. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel to see more content like this. Do all that cool jazz and hopefully I'll be able to catch you in my next video. Goodbye!